Boy, oh boy. In our neck of the woods, it's certainly winter, and boy, it's, we know about it as well in the northern hemisphere. Certainly been very, very wet across Christmas and into the new year, and of course those huge snowstorms in the United States as well. But... Summer, it may seem a long way off, but we've got spring to come yet. And if you're in the southern hemisphere and you're listening to us, you know, your turn will come. It's going to get chillier for you as well, guys. Don't be too too cocksure in your attitude. But it's just the kind of time that you want to hunker down, turn up the heating, close the curtains, slash drapes wherever you are, and tuck into some comfort food like a good gluten-free pie. Sally Carson is from the fabulously named company called Clive's Pies. We've got um, gluten-free um, vegetarian pies. Most of them are gluten-free, wheat-free and dairy-free. So you've got some people having a, a taste test here. Tell us what the different flavours are that you've got going. Because these are a bit different. It's not just turkey pie or beef pie or something like that, is no, it? No, they certainly are different. All our, all our recipes come from sort of different corners of the world. So this one here is a, an alu gobi, which is a, a curried potato and vegetable in a coconutty sauce. Uh, then we have a French cassoulet, which, as the name suggests, is a French recipe. Um, it's uh, haricot beans with shredded cabbage, onions, garlic and bits of chestnut. Very rich, very tasty. Then we have minty chickpea. Now this one's a bit of an Arabian type recipe. Um, it has mint in it, it has um, apricots in it, so there's a bit of sweetness, but it's sort of chickpeas mixed in with some tomatoes, there's some um, onions and some carrot. It's really tasty, but a lovely bit of sweetness. And then we have the vegetable chilli pie. This is, as you'd expect, chilli but without the meat. Uh, so it's got the kidney beans and all the different vegetables. Um, then we have a lentil and olive. Now this is a lovely, lovely pie, lovely taste. It's got a, an olive pate in it, which means it's got a really, really deep, deep flavour of, of, of olives um, and um, mixed with lentils and a few vegetables and all these pies are encased in a lovely gluten-free pastry which is actually a very short pastry um, so it's quite crispy um, and we've been l- letting people taste it today so little bits of pastry with some of the filling and they've all been blown away it's been fabulous they really are deep filled because you can be short changed by other pies on the market can't you yeah you can we, we hand fill ours so we have an ice cream scoop and somebody you know takes the scoop out of the bucket um, slices the top off and fills the pie so you know that every pie has got a proper proper scoop you know full of filling it's great now these pies here are um, to, to use your word again filling uh, and, and particularly I would guess something that you would want to have as a, as a hearty meal in winter time yeah. but I guess people aren't going to be buying these in the heat of the heat of the summer when no. they're perhaps more into the salads and the lighter meals yeah I mean you'd be surprised a lot of people still are buying these gluten free pies because for people that are celiac or you know are avoiding dairy or wheat in their diet you know at lunchtime it's very difficult for them to get something for lunch you know you can't just pick up that sort of product in, in, you know, a store in the high street. So a lot of people are still eating, you know, the pies through the winter, through the summer months. But also we have another range of our uh, range of dips that, you know, do allow people to have something also that's really healthy and tasty through the summer as well. So, so we can fill both markets. And also you've got some pots here as well. So these are plastic pots yes. with, are they the, the fillings from you've got no. over here? No, no, they're, no they're, they're different. They're completely different yeah. fillings. The reason these came about is that people said to us, we really love your pies, but we're trying to cut back on our pastry intake. And they said, can you put the filling into a pot and sell it as a a pot mill? And I said, no, 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 we'll do better than that. We'll just redesign and recreate four new fillings. And so that's what we've got. So we've got a Moroccan tagine, we've got a Thai veggie curry, a dookie bean stew, and a Mediterranean ragu. They're all made with lovely fresh ingredients. We get all our, all our vegetables from Riverfoot Organics, which are down about two miles from where we're based in Buckfastley. We hand prep it in our own kitchens, we hand prep all our own veg. Um, and um, they're really, really tasty. And how are people eating these? Is it with what, um, jacket potatoes or well, rice, or funny, how does that work? Well, funny enough, you see a lot of people just eating them out of the pot with a spoon. Um, but yes, if you take them home for an evening meal, it is um, perhaps a bit of um, rice or couscous or quinoa or you know something to um, to. With, and some, a lot of people share it between two of them. So they'd have half a pot each with some vegetables and a bit of um, potato or something like that. And I was reading on your website that uh, unlike perhaps a a lot of produce, you don't have a weight on your pies, but there's a reason for that, isn't there, which is rather nice. There is, there is a reason for that. The the, the 
weight thing has always been an issue, and we do get a lot of communication from, from our customers about it. But the problem with the, the pies is you can actually never guarantee what, what size, that what weight they're going to be. So, for instance, all the lids are hand-rolled, and so some of them are a bit thicker than others, and that can make the difference of 10, 20 grams on a pie. And because they are hand-filled, you know, when, when you scoop it, you know, it might not be that you get a completely level scoop, and some might be slightly domed, and so they are all going to be different weights. And it does just show that it is handmade, it's not mass-produced with a machine. You have some machines, surely, you're not rolling out the pastry by hand. Well, we're, roll, we're rolling the lids by hand. Are you? We're rolling the lids by hand, but the, um, the pie machine actually forms the base of the pie, and then we put the hand-rolled lid on the top. But yes, the, the pie is actually made in a machine that presses out the base and then seals and cuts the top of the pie and the excess pastry off. Now, I saw you last year, and I bought a couple of your pies as well, because I kind of had to, because you couldn't buy them anywhere else. Everything's changed, doesn't it, in the last 12 months? Well, it's been a very, very interesting 12 months, I have to say. We've, um, we managed to get ourselves listed on the Ocado website, and on the Ocado website, you can now find all our pies, all our gluten-free cakes, all our dips, and all our pot-off meals which has been fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And we didn't even talk about your cakes. Uh, there's some fantastic-looking ones over there, but also some rather large ones, because you're doing something else that I haven't seen anyone else do at the show this year with your larger cakes. We are. We've, um, we've been very fortunate. A lot of people have come back to us and said, you know, I've got customers that have eaten your cakes, the little mini cakes, and said, you know, can, can you get a bigger version? And so people are buying it for their deli counters, for their cafes, for their restaurants, and having it as a dessert or with a cup of coffee. And um, we've got a number of shops that do this now, which is, which is lovely, really lovely. So where do you go from here? Oh, difficult question, very difficult question. Is it more, more flavours of pies or is it uh, extending the range of something else? I don't know. I think we've got to work harder at getting the pies to the people. Um, sounds a bit of cliche, pies to the people. But that's, I think, what we need to do because, you know, I need to be able to guarantee that somebody that lives in Northwest six can actually go within a two or three mile radius and be able to buy our pie and I can't do that at the moment so I think we've got to put a lot of energy into getting our London market a bit better served so whether or not we need to think about you know something that's actually working for us in London which we've never done before um, but that might be an option because I think it's vital that people can actually get hold of our pies they taste them they love them they need to buy, be able to buy them and buy them conveniently what's for our point of view, quite quite fascinating is that there's so much sweet stuff, you know. And I think the sweet things is what's dominating the market. And I think there's still a lot of potential for the savoury side to grow. Um, and so whether that does mean that we might venture into, you know, gluten-free pizzas or I don't know, I don't know. But my priority really is making sure that we can get the product out around to the, you know independent supermarkets or other supermarkets so that people can buy them.